Hi, everybody. Welcome to week four. Oh, everybody's so chatty. Excellent. You're obviously in a mood for pair programming. And we'll, uh, we'll get to that later on, but there are some things that I want to start out with. Uh, we'll do Prime Minister's questions. There's some uh, show and tell that I want to do with the code. There were some things that came up during the week that I wanted to review with everybody here together um, to get some uh, questions about it. Um, then we'll start in the pair programming. We also need to uh, cover Project 4. So lots of good stuff. Um, good stuff tonight. But first, I want to start out with Prime Minister's questions. Uh, what can I tell you? How was your week? Uh, any questions still about uh, Project 4? Project 2. Sorry, that's 2. I know, yeah, all right. Project 2? There were, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, the day that the project's due, there's like an exponentially more number of slacks that go by. And I'm sorry, I'm at work and I can't answer them all in, in, much t in, in real time. So, yeah. Yeah, what's the right way to submit that text files? Yeah, there were some questions about submitting text files. I'm going to get to where they should go in the um, in the project, and uh, I think I the, pro so, so the I think the submit program should be able to submit them. Um, and so then uh, let's make sure though if it doesn't that we figure that out because because uh, this is the first uh, term that I've uh, that I've had people submit there. What? Yeah, because I was going to say, I... You weren't able to do it? Yeah, I, well, so I lost points on the first project because... Because of the readme. Yeah, because yeah. of the resource. And then I just hard-coded the second one because I didn't want to... Okay, that, that's cool for the readme, but it's something that we ought to be able to support. And so then, I don't know if the problem on, on my side uh, or if it's uh, in the project that's being submitted. So let's figure that out and, and make sure people can submit because certainly for um, projects, well, two, three, and four... There's all, you know, they, they parse things and you want to be, I want you to be able to, you know, have um, hard-coded, or not hard-coded, have uh, static uh, text files that you can then test your parser with, things like that. So we'll look at that uh, tonight. Any other questions about Project 2? How are people doing on the cones? Remember those? The other assignment that's coming up? Uh, how, how are people doing there? Bro, you know, come, come along. Oh, base sixty four code doesn't work on Java eleven. So it's okay on Java twelve, but not Java eleven. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. Huh. Cool. Yeah. Hey, I can't hear your Jeff, right? Can't hear Jeff talking. So, could those of you who are not Jeff who are talking, please stop talking? I'm looking at the people who are talking, not Jeff. Okay. So, if you're having trouble, I recommend going into the Linux labs because I think you graded them there, right? Yes, I graded them on the the CS Parver machines. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Cones coming up. Project two. Uh, anybody start project three yet? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Uh, I have a I have a Slack channel for that, right? He says, let's turn that up. That's why I have the right thing. Yep, I do have project three. Great. Since I'm here, I'll just create a project four. Good on project. Yay. Okay. Sweet. And so then I'm not going to Add people, you all figure it out. You're smart. Uh, okay then. Um, any other questions before I dive into something? Nope. Okay. Wait. Yeah, Alex is here. Good. Okay. So uh, I was working with a student at office hours, uh, and uh, he had written a bunch of. Uh, automated tests, super awesome, and uh, they were automated tests of his text parser, also super awesome, that were using files on the, uh, uh, read from, uh, from the, the, the file system. That's good, uh, but uh, we were, as we were working together, I, I noticed that, oh, they were all in the top-level airline directory, and uh, just like those of you who had the, the readme file, um, that's not going to work when I run it on the PSU machines. I want all of the, or at least you know, the project expects, 
what, what I do is I run your project not from the airline directory, but actually from the parent directory. That's the current working directory. That's the way I do it. Um, and so then if your code sort of depend, assumes a relative path or uh, just expects to be run in that parent directory, that's not going to work. So uh, what I want to take some time is to show you how to use the resources directory in Maven to, uh, to store static files that your program needs. So I've posted about this a couple of times on Slack. Um, uh, you know, I put up that, uh, that diff against my, um, I guess my, my repository that lets you use the readme file. But I want to take some time here in class and walk this through you because this is going to be something that's really important for your projects uh, three and four also. So I thought it would be a good thing to invest in. Um, and that student, Alex, was nice enough to agree to have me use his code uh, as an example because my, my code sort of doesn't, uh, do doesn't have this yet. So he's a lot uh, further along than I am. So uh, we got his code to a point that if you run uh, Maven W, oh, I didn't make it, I didn't it yet. One, Maven W. Now, okay, so now uh, we oops, we can run clean verify. Everything should work okay. If we run it from the airline directory, so it runs all the tests, everything like that. But if we run it from the parent directory, which is how I'm going to grade it, uh, if we uh, run Maven W and we say dash F for the palm file. Uh, so we say airline palm.xml clean verify. Pretty sure things are going to blow up pretty bad. We'll see. Oh no, it all worked. Huh, so much for that. But I, I want to show you, like, I want to, Alex, you know why that worked? Do you know why that worked? No. I don't know why that worked. Yeah, okay. Uh, but uh, but we'll, we'll take some time and make it better. So, uh, if we look at Alex's, if we, ooh, that's very small. Let's see here. If we make that a little bigger, uh, Alex's integration tests. Uh, oh, no, it's not the integration test. It is the text parser text. Yeah, test. So, uh, he has uh, th these. He has like this hard-coded empty airline. Uh, oh, interesting. Huh. Uh, you know, e empty airline file. So if we go and look at this, empty airline. Look, it's empty. Uh, that he then pa passes to his uh, to his text parser and validates it. And it's located right here at the top of the hierarchy in uh, in airline. So uh, this. Uh, this, this works fine when you run the program from, or when you run Maven from this top-level directory. But uh, actually, I'm not too sure if you could submit this file. Now that I think about it, I don't think I would. I don't think the submit program would uh, accept this file because one, it's the top-level directory, and also it might barf on a dot airline file. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I enforce that only dot XML and dot uh, txt files can be submitted in resource directories. So I'll have to change a couple of things in order to get it to submit. So uh, inside, let's see here, inside the oh, inside the the test directory, there's this resources directory. Now things in resources are uh, actually oh, sorry, I hope that's you can see that. Okay, um, yeah, I can't make this bigger. Uh, these are static files that are read by uh, Java code. And in this case, these are, uh, because it's in the test uh, hierarchy, directory hierarchy, these are test files uh, that are read by your tests. And so then, like, out of the box, there's this airline uh, XML helper test, which we'll come back to later tonight when we talk about Project 4, um, that basically uh, validates that, yes, you, know, you can parse that, that these uh, airline XML files can be parsed. Um, and also, it's meant to like leave you some breadcrumbs on here's how to use these APIs to, uh, to parse XML. Now here, we don't want to parse XML. We want to parse those airline files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all those airline files 
uh, I'm just going to move star.airline to that uh, to that resources directory. That's not Maven. Move. Move all that. Okay, so now I think if we run the test, I'd expect it to fail. It does because it gets a, I'll make that a little bigger, it gets a no such file or directory. Okay, that's cool. So, resources, okay, you guys know what jar files are, right? When you build an application in Java, all of the compiled uh, or otherwise processed um, files are glommed all together into an archive called a jar file, a Java archive. And this is good because now you've got one file which is either like your entire library or your entire application. And while most of the time we think of a jar file containing class files, it can contain any file. Um, and, and here, um, Maven, if you have things in the resources directory, that will be put into the jar file or put into the class, or put, put into the runtime class path of the, uh, of the code that's being run. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to, uh, in, in order for this code to now find the, the file in the place where it lives, we need to use the resources API. So the whole idea behind the resources API, and there's more, there's more about this in I think the reflection lecture, which is coming up, um, is, uh, is, is meant to be able to say, hey, listen, I'm a class and I want to go find a resource, a file, that, an external file that is associated with me and my functions. Um, and so then you'll notice that the directory hierarchy for your resources mirrors the directory hierarchy for your classes, your package for the classes. Um, and so the way you uh, access this stuff is, in, uh, is relative to the class um, that, uh, that's accessing it. So now you see we've got all of these uh, airline files. So now instead of, uh, in, instead of just saying this is a file path, instead what it is is a resource path. So I'll say resource path. Now let's call it resource. And now we need to load the resource. Now, even though in the, you know, underneath the covers it really is a file on the directory, um, it might be someplace else. It might be an entry in a jar file. You could download a resource from a URL. Um, the resource API abstracts out where the resource actually resides, and instead it just gives you an input stream to it. Um, and so the way you access the resource API is you say uh, this dot get class get resource as string, resource, sorry, resource as stream, and we'll call that resource. And then uh, this is, we'll just call this stream. So this is an input stream. You guys remember what an input stream is? What's an input stream? And read what exactly? Well, that's the source of the input stream. We read bytes, right? There's streams and then there's readers, writers. Streams are all about byte data. So you know, you're reading data off of a socket or from a, from a file, right? And it's, yes, it's binary, but if it's a text file, it's ASCII encoded or it's UTF-8 encoded or something like that. Um, if you're reading text, uh, you can take that input, the input stream that has bytes and then you can wrap these things called readers and writers around them, which actually we'll have to do shortly. So, okay. Uh, so now we can get the resource as a uh, as a stream, and actually, well, now if we run it, actually, we really haven't changed anything here. We've just renamed it, so it should still fail. But I suppose it still tells whether or not we can get the uh, get the stream. Okay, uh, accepted a parser exception, but got a file not found exception. That makes sense. So now, when what we want to parse isn't the name of a file; it's an input stream. So now uh, we're going to change the constructor here to have this be the input stream. The, they'll say, hey, we don't have one of these constructors, so let's create that constructor. Put stream stream. OK. Uh, this is cool. So now we've got, uh, oh, actually, I, so I hadn't looked at Alex's code. This is really nice, the way he's got a file writer here. Um, this will make it pretty easy to, uh, it'll make it comparatively easy to uh, refactor, to have the input not only be the name of a file, but also be an input stream. So, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take his text parser that was implemented to, um, uh, to 
take use only a file path. And now we're going to make it a little bit more flexible by saying, hey, you can parse text, uh, a, a, an airline text file that comes, yes, from the uh, file with a given path, but also from just any old input stream. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to use some of those uh, uh, some of those APIs, some of those classes that you find in the file.io package. Um, and these are pretty important to the class. These provide some very fundamental abstractions, important to the course, sorry, um, that uh, provide some fundamental abstractions that you'll see in a number of places, including in Project 4 with the XML APIs. So I'm going to change a couple of things. So basically what I want to say, I really like this file reader, this FR. Uh, well, I, I like the fact that the field is a file reader. I don't like the name, though. So we're just going to call this, we're going to rename that to reader. Um, and now... I'm not going to be reading just from a file reader. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into a more generic, uh, more general reader. So reader is the parent class of, of file reader. I mean, this is an interface. I can't remember. Uh, that's a class. And a reader just has a method like read that will return um, text, and he's already using this. So this is cool. I don't need to change anything else here. Um, I do want to make this final, though. Why, why would I want to make that final? First of all, what does final mean? Uh, a final method, that's true. A final field has a different connotation. It's like a constant in that. You sorry? Right, can't change the value of it. You can't assign it. You can only assign it once. And where is the place that you can only assign it once for a final field? Initially, a constructor. Right, you can only assign it once in a constructor. So this is good. I'm saying, hey, um, all constructors need to initialize this field uh, because uh, you know I don't want to have uh, an uninitialized usage of it down here. Okay, so now all I need to do, I have an input stream that contains my text parser, and I need to turn that into a file reader. So here's how you, so, so I've got an input stream, which is an object that knows how to read bytes, and I want to turn it into an object that knows how to read characters. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the adapter design pattern by basically taking this input stream and wrapping objects around it until I have something that implements the reader uh, interface. That is a reader. And I think I can do that by saying this. I think there is a new input stream reader. Oh, look at that. Stream. Cool. And so now, when I run my test, hey, it passes. So let's review what we've done. We've, uh, instead of having, uh, instead of reading it as a file, instead we're reading it as a resource. It's underneath the coverage, it's still a file, but your code doesn't care. You're just saying, hey, test framework, go find me the empty.airline file. And now I get that as an input stream because this code doesn't know whether it comes from a file or a URL or a, uh, you know, it could come from anywhere. Um, middle of a jar file. Uh, and then I just send that stream down to my text parser. Uh, and because of the way Alex implemented his text parser in the first place, using uh, sort of a, a, a general uh, reader, I was very easy, I was very easily able to adapt uh, this code to then read from an input stream. So I think there's a really important lesson here about abstraction, programming to the interface, that thing that I'm always harping on. See, none of the parse code actually had to change. The only thing that changed here is that I renamed a field, right? You can still parse the same code because all this code here, all it cares about is just calling the read method. And that reader still has that read method, right? This is really nice. I'm able to make a nice isolated change. And because I, uh, I Alex, had a unit test for it, we can easily verify that, yes, everything's still working. Um, I'm going to do some wash, rinse, and repeat here. But before I do that, any questions about what I did? Yeah. Do we have a folder in the resources directory? That'd be uh, yes, you can. Yeah, and so then if uh, let's say you want to have a yeah file called text files, yeah, then you would just say like text files, you know, uh, text files <laughs> slash empty airline or something like that. Yep. Yeah, and so it abstracts out the fact that it's reading from the file system there. But yeah, if you just added then you know uh, Alex Rose slash text files, it would do that. Yeah, good question. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, how did I fix that? Anyway. Okay, so now let me go through and... Uh, yeah. 
I will uh, I'll sort of do the same thing a couple more times here. Input stream stream equals get class dot get resources stream. Do that stream. So this one should run okay now. Yep, that one passes. Same thing here again. So anyway, um, I encourage you to do this. And as a matter of fact, I might even require you to do this for your uh, for your projects. Um, so let's see here. Please be sure before you submit to uh, after you you know you're on the PSU machines. You've run. You've done like your Maven package and everything. CD up a directory and then run it. Run Maven with a dash F command and specify here's the palm I want you to use just to make sure that your submission will work. And speaking of which, I want to make sure we after I do this, I want to make sure that the um, that the uh, submission program will take it. Because here again, we're kind of blazing new ground here. I've never uh, blazing new trails. You don't blaze ground. We're Anyway, uh, I've never had student soups do this before. I don't need to debug it. Okay, cool. All of that's running. Let's see if it works from the command line. Uh, let's just try it from here. Okay, let's try it from one directory up. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, now, I'm going to uh, commit this code back to Alex. He was nice enough to uh, let us have his code up on screen. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch uh, in his repository. So move uh, resource files to resources directory. Actually, I'll just call them text files. Test text files to resources directory. And then I've got all my changes here. Actually, I've got a bunch of unversion files. I want to add those too. Huh, I wonder why. Oh, because I didn't do a regular move. I add those to version control. Okay. Um, actually, do I still have all of them here in this directory? Get status. Nope. Looks like I've deleted them, and I moved the test. Uh, There we go. I think. Yeah, that looks good. Huh. Okay. Oh. Hmm. There you go. Everything's moved now. Good. I will commit these. Um, I'll commit them to that branch. And so I will say uh, moved uh, text files used for testing from the top level directory. Directory to the uh, source test resources directory and changed the test to read those files as resources. Um, this ensures that the project can be run uh, from any directory. Hugs and kisses, love Dave. Okay. And so I'll push all that up to uh, to GitHub. And I gotta go find the GitHub repository. Let's see here. Uh, this was a. Uh, there we go. So now if you go to GitHub, GitHub's nice enough to say, "Hey, listen, someone just pushed some changes to a branch in this repository." And I'm like, oh, that was me. Now I did this stuff. Uh, I did this work uh, on a branch because, well. 
you know, Alex was nice enough to share his code base with me. By the way, this is a, a private repository, so you all can't see it. Um, uh, and, I, and I don't, and he might have been making other changes on Master that I don't have. So I don't want to just like, blah, you know, put all my code in there. I said, I want to put what's called a pull request in GitHub, which is saying, hey, I've made some changes that I want you to consider. So I'm going to create one of these pull requests. And uh, what GitHub allows you to do then is create this thing called a pull request. It will say, hey, uh, there was this one commit that had all these files that were changed. You can go review all of this stuff. And then I can, uh, then I can uh, have a conversation with Alex uh, about this if he so desires. So uh, move test files to uh, a resources directory, to the resources directory. Are you all familiar with pull requests? Am I telling you stuff you already know? Okay, so I'll go quite quickly then. Um, so, hey, Alex, um, here are the changes that I made in class. You can click, well, um, feel free to merge this request into your, this pull request, into your uh, master. Branch. So I create a pull request. This will send him an email and everything like that. But now when he looks at his pull requests, he's got one. It's mine. And he can go through and uh, he can look at the files that were changed. Uh, he can go and uh, you know do things like ask questions about it. Um, there's all sorts of uh, really great conversations uh, that can be had uh, and everything. Um, so anyway. So uh, if you want to get your, and so all, all he needs to do is um, click uh, merge pull request. There's some different options here. There, just click merge pull request, it'll be fine. Um, and then that'll get my changes into his main branch. And then if he does a git pull from a checkout of his master, um, he'll, uh, he'll get those changes too. So anyway, pull requests are really neat. So that's, uh, any questions on, Resources or what we did? Yeah. yeah I, just, I just thought, um, so that was uh, for my parser. Um, what about um, for the, the dumper? Mm -hmm. um, when I was testing my dumper, I would just write out once again, and I believe it was writing out to that top level directory, and then I was, I was opening it and like, looking at it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. And so then, this is, this, is another, uh, this is another place where I would do it a little differently. Okay. So, right, okay, so that we, te we uh, so, so when you're testing your parsers, and by the way, you're gonna be writing an, uh, writing an XML parser, and so then the same thing will apply in project four. Um, yes, it makes sense to have, like, here's a file on, uh, uh, it's a resource, load it as a resource, and see if you can parse it. Now, when you're writing stuff out, you know, do you really need to write to the file system? Probably not. All you're doing is sort of, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you're creating temp files or, or whatever. Uh, do you really need to do that? Well, uh, so, so, so no, you don't. But what if we could just like write to an in-memory buffer and then you know, convert that to a string and then compare the string, right? Well, you can do that using the file I.O. APIs. Again, these are covered in the lecture, uh, in the file uh, API lecture, but we can uh, talk a little bit about it now because I think it'll be, that'll be good. So let's take this, this is, a, this is a really good example. Let's see here, uh, writes airline with no flight. So what does he do here? He has uh, a file path. He creates his text, text dumper here that'll dump to this file. And then he reads, uses the file reader to read that file path. Um, and then he reads it into a character array and then turns it into a string and, contain, and asserts a contained string. This test passes, right? And this is a fine test, um, except that as you know, Alex pointed out, it's like you gotta create a, this file in some directory and then it sort of stays around. Well, um, I'll show you how you can use the file I.O. APIs to instead of writing to, always writing to a file, have it write to a, uh, a, a in-memory buffer that you can then uh, just validate that test. So, um, we don't want the file anymore. And instead, uh, we'll use a, uh, we'll use a, what's called a, a writer. Actually, well, wait a second here. Well, that's before we do that. Oops, what did I just do? Oh yeah, no, I want that on your, sorry. Uh, text dumper test, good. Okay, let's look at the text dumper. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so here the code is a, a little different. Um, I'm going to uh, refactor this to look a little bit more like the uh, the. Right, yeah. Here, and, and this is an interesting design choice and one that we're exploring here. Um, you know, he said, ah, the text dumper uh, is, is going to write to this, uh, is always going to write to a file, so might as well uh, pass in the file path and then just have that be the thing that you dump to uh, out here, uh, right here. That'll probably work fine for uh, project uh, four, but, uh, sorry, project two. But then think about your pretty printer in project three. It's got to dump to both a file and to standard out. Yeah, and maybe some of you are thinking about your project three because the POA is due on Sunday, um, uh, you know, and how, how you're gonna structure that. Um, so in the, you have an airline dumper that uh, dumps uh, so text file, you have an airline, in the pretty printer, you have an airline dumper that dumps to either a, a standard out or a file. Here, for the sake of text, uh, for testing, you want it to either uh, dump to a file or have it dump to uh, an, an array in memory or just some other, uh, some other writer. So yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of re refactoring first. Um, as a matter of fact, what I want to do, yeah, I'll, I'll keep the same branch. I'll create, a, I'll create a new branch, though, so we can have two different pull requests. Um, and we're going to call this. Uh, well, no, we'll 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 give away the ending later when we we're going to give it a good name. Okay, so here um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to refactor this, and I'm going to say uh, extract field, and I'm going to call it. I'm just going to call it writer. Nice. And then oh, I didn't want to initialize it there though. Well, I can just take it up here, and I can initialize it here. And, uh, oh, it's telling me there's going to be an I.O. exception. Okay, I can add that to my uh, text dumper uh, constructor. That's fine. And uh, let's see here. I want this to be private. I also want it to be final. And what is it telling me here? Oh, access can be private. Well, that's cool. Make private. Um, and as a matter of fact, I don't think I even need this file path, right? Right. Oh yeah, can be converted. Okay, you probably can't see that. Can be converted to a local variable. Great, convert it to a local variable in the constructor. Yay, cleaning up some code. Okay, I made some changes. Now I want to run my tests again just to make sure I haven't broken anything. Nice. Okay. Uh, cool. So now I, I've refactored my text dumper to uh, dump to a, a file writer. Um, now I bet we're just using the write method here, so I don't even need to, need to be a file writer, it needs to be a generic old writer. This is good. So now uh, if I add a, uh, well, it probably doesn't need to be tech public, te uh, text dumper constructor that takes a writer. Oops. Writer. This dot writer equals writer. Cool. Now I've got one that just passes in a writer, and this is the constructor that I want to use in my test. As a matter of fact, do I have an at visible for testing? No, I don't. I should. Um, so yeah, the only reason we have this constructor is to use it in the testing code. So here, instead of writing it to this file, so now I can get rid of my file. And now I want to write it to a writer. Okay, <coughs> so what kind of writer do I want? Well, what I want to do is I want to, uh, I, I, I basically want to have it say, when you write to this writer, just build up a big string of memory. And I'm pretty sure there's something called a string writer that does that for me. Excellent. What does it take? This size, don't need it. Okay, well that's cool now. So now, String writer. Let's see here. Name. Well, that's name's not. Is is that the best no. name for what? What would be a better name for the name variable? Uh, text yeah. or or even just airline? Yeah, maybe text. Maybe because it is the text that's dumped. Oh, the name so far? That's cool. Okay. Okay, so before we were getting it from reading the file, now, um, 
Now we can get it from the... Uh, oh yeah, we don't need to do any of that stuff now. Now we can just say... Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to say string text equals uh, our writer dot... I think it's just two string, right? And let's see here. We don't need this anymore because we don't need to say the value of a string. Now let's try this. I think this is the way the API works. We'll run that again. And it's green. And now we don't need to write the temp file anymore. So what have we done? We have uh, abstracted the... We, we've changed... We, first thing we do is we refracted our text dumper to, uh, to change our dump code to say, listen, I don't care... I, I don't need to know that you're writing to a, a file. You're just writing to somewhere. You're writing to some writer. And so the dump code just says, hey, listen, just call the write API on any old writer you want. Now, we kept our existing constructor, which takes a file path and says, okay, great, take that file path, create a file writer for that file, uh, file path, and there's your writer. Great. We also added this new constructor, which says, oh, yeah, here's your writer, use that one. And then in our test, that's the constructor that we use, sorry, when we create our, our text dumper. We just use that, uh, we just say, hey, send in the writer. The writer that we're sending in is a string writer. Great. And so text number, it doesn't care what type of writer it gets. As long as it implements that writer interface, as long as it is a writer, capital W writer, it'll just go ahead and use it. It doesn't care what it is. In this case, where it's writing to isn't a file. It's a string in memory. It writes the contents of the, uh, of the airline, dumps the contents of the airline into that string of memory. And this is great for our test because then all we need to do is get that string back and assert that it contains the string that we want. Yeah? So, how does the Oh, yeah, good question. Uh, do we need to close these streams? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, you ought to. Um, now, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a string buffer in memory in a unit test. It's not super important, but you're right. Um, to be more proper, and this is probably not something that's going to Oh, actually, he calls writer.close right here. That's nice. Um, I think the uh, one thing that, okay, well, yeah, so let's see here. Do you want me to make another pull request just for these changes, or should I just commit them and I'll add it to the existing pull request? Uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. I want all this, so. Yeah, so like, why, why make two pull requests? Yeah. Actually, this, yeah, this is kind of a nice feature of, uh, actually, let me, let me make sure everything works. Right? So before you check in, especially in a pull request when someone's watching, make sure that all uh, your stuff runs. It does. This is cool. And so then uh, I'm going to say uh, refactored the text dumper to take a, uh, an arbitrary writer in order to allow us to... Actually, uh, writer. This allows us to create unit tests for the airline dumper, sorry, the text dumper that do not require a file to be written. So I'll send that up. Push. I push it to the same branch, and since there is a pull request open on that branch, get, uh, oh yeah, Get now it, it, it refreshed in the background. You didn't even see it. Now it has my uh, my next commit as part of the uh, of that same pull request, and so more and more files are getting changed, which means that there's you know the pull request is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, sorry, where's the uh, where's the where's the writer? Oops, man, do I need to reload? It's not seeing those changes. Yeah, there's the writer. So it sees the changes uh, there also. So let's see here. So you're Michelle, right? Okay. Yeah, so M Michelle mentioned something really important, which is uh, closing. So, uh, you know, w w when, yeah, right, we all learn in uh, CS200 or whatever your, your equivalent course is, after you've been programming for a while, it's like, hey, listen, when you open a file or when you open a socket, you always got to close it. Right, because otherwise uh, the connection's still open. You have a file handle that's just sort of sitting there off in space, and bad things can go wrong. You need to clean up after yourself. So it's really awesome that this code ca uh, calls close on the on the writer. Um, 
it seems unlikely, but if one of these uh, maybe calls to write throws an I.O. exception or something, the code down here won't be executed. So uh, the, the pattern that you, know, you used to see a lot is that you put this in like a try finally. Um, finally, and ugh, the indenting is not working. I don't know why. Ugly. Um, let's see here. You need another one of these. Soics. Uh, this is when you say code, reformat code. Yay, make it pretty. Um, but you can also, uh, they added in, I don't know, Java 8 or one <coughs> language or something. Uh, you can now have an expression here uh, in the try block, and that will, and if you send an expression here that returns a closable, something that implements a closed interface that basically gives you a closed method, um, it will automatically close it. So you'll see this pattern too. And, and this is kind of nice, concise syntax, right? So it's like, hey, in this block, you know, try it with a, a writer. If there's any exception that's thrown, it'll automatically close the stream and then propagate the exception up, just like you would in the finally block. So that's what I recommend doing. Good catch. So once again, let's uh, run our tests. Okay, and so I'll commit that one also. Uh, use the uh, try try automatic auto close. I think is what it was called. Oh yeah, try with yes, try with resources auto close. Um, try block uh, to ensure that the uh, writer. Cool. Anyway, so that was a, a neat little detour through the the file I/O API. But uh, it, it, but these are like important lessons when it comes to not only just using these APIs, but also how to take advantage of abstraction in your code. Right, the fact that the dump method, the parse method, they don't care what kind of writer or reader they're dealing with. They just want to know that's a writer or a reader. Who cares if you're reading from a file or you're reading from uh, or you know a, a byte stream? Yeah. I'm sorry, it might be hard to get to the log Oh, string writer and buffered writer? Um, what is a buffered writer? Uh, buffered writer might write a byte array? I don't remember. Um, there's a, uh, I know there's a buffered reader. Is there a buffered writer? Right, you have a buffered writer, character output stream, buffering character. So this actually has buffering behavior where I don't, a string writer probably doesn't. Right, so means it'll chunk it up, and so this is. I think buffered writer. I would use, yeah, buffered writer. I would use if I was reading lots and lots of data, right? And so then this has the you know buffering capability, and so I think what it'll, boy, I, I'm kind of making an assumption here, but um, yeah, actually no, I'm not. I'm not going to say that because I don't know if it's true. So uh, okay. Yeah, so okay, so here's uh, you have a print writer which gives you print line. You wrap it around a buffered writer so that as you're, let's say you're writing lots of text to your print uh, writer, this will buffer it up into chunks and then write those chunks down to the file writer so that you're not writing like, you know, every byte to the disk all the time because that's slow. It's better to buffer things up into chunks and write them down in, in chunks. Make sense? Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's the difference. And so then string writer. Um, only writes to so uh, so right a buffered uh, a buffered writer um, is the whole idea is that you wrap it around another writer so it's not a, it's an intermediate writer it's not a terminal right it is not a final terminal as in final not as in like terminal output it, it, it's 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 an ending um, writer it is a is a destination there you go a destination for the bytes sort of stop there that's what a file writer is that's what a string writer is a buffered writer on the other hand buffers them up and then sends them someplace else okay. Nice, that was a good question. Thank you for asking it. So, um, 
the reason I wanted to show you all this stuff is that it's important for your projects, right? So uh, please use resource files for reading uh, text files, and we'll see XML files for your tests. Um, I also encourage you to use a text file to read your, um, uh, your read your readme. And one important question is, can we submit this? So let's go find out. Uh, let's. Uh, 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 sure, we'll do it as me. So now, so let, I'm going to go then check out Alex's code. Uh, you, you can guess my age, because whenever I read that, I read Axel Rose. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, it was, it was the 80s. Um, okay, so now I'll get a copy of his uh, repository. Uh, oh, it won't. Uh, you know what? I'll just switch to that branch. Good call. Do you, you want to merge your changes? Yeah, actually. Yeah, go ahead. So, oh, wait a second. Oh, because it's an airline. Right, so right now, I've got a revision of his, um, of his repository that uh, is, not, is, is, on the, is on the main branch. Right, it's on master, sorry, it's on the master branch. And uh, it doesn't have any of my changes in it. So if we go and look, uh, you know, nowhere does, uh, Nowhere does my name appear. Oh, I guess I, ah, I guess the original ones, uh, it does. Uh, those really old revisions, but none of the recent revisions have my name, right? So the last change was uh, earlier today at uh, four o'clock. But then once he goes and, uh, see here, I'll go back to the pull request. Oh, and it's gone. So, so what he did was he uh, merged the code that basically says, hey, I was doing all my work on the branch. It merged those three commits off of that branch. You can go and delete it if you want. So now if I go and I pull those changes down from GitHub into my local clone, it pulled down all the files. It tells me that things have changed. This is great. Now if I go and look at the log, there's the commit that Alex just made. And what he committed was all my changes. So uh, the, the, the way that he merged my code in, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, keep uh, Dave's changes there in my change log uh, in my uh, change history, which is nice because then says, hey, you know, I wrote this code. And so, uh, you know, it's, he, can, he can see it there and say, oh, yeah, all right, there was that one time in class when Dave, like, you know, refactored all that stuff. Um, but now it's there. And so now those files are gone. Oh, A, B, and C are still there. I wonder, I probably just forgot to take those out. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to uh, execute. So I'm pretending I'm going to submit now. Uh, oops, made in W. So now I'm going to run the clean and the verify. I'd also do a dash p greater just to make sure that the code coverage is there, but I don't think it is yet, and that's fine. And running the PSU machines <laughs> apparently is pretty slow. Um, Anyway, while this is happening, anybody have any questions? <laughs> How about that sports team? Are we making small talk here? Uh, are there? I, I don't know. Oh, that's right. Between two teams that I'm not terribly interested in. They're probably good, though. Well, that's good. It's... <laughs> Nice to want things. Okay, good. Everything, everything passed. That's a good, important step. Uh, and so now I will. Uh, let's see here. Um, I will run you Whitlock jars greater dot jar. Oh, I want is to submit. EDPDX CS four ten. Oops. CS four ten J greater submit. Okay, the project is project two. The student is Alex Rose. There we go. That's your ID. Oh, wait, is that your name? 
Yeah, that's the name. Okay. So like David, well, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm not actually going to submit it. Um, Alex Rose, and that's the login ID. It'll check that. I'll just use my email. And then the source directory is source. Let's see if it submits. Okay, it's complaining about a lot of things. It's saying not submitting a backup file because it doesn't end in Java. Package.html in the wrong place, that's fine. And it doesn't like these airline files. Okay, so we gotta change that. So let's go and uh, do this again. Uh, I am going to, okay, since he merged his code, I am going to go check out uh, master again. Then I'm going to pull down the latest changes from, now I'm, right, I'm on a different machine, I'm on my local machine, so I'm going to pull down the changes there. It's going to get all of the stuff from, uh, from master. It says, look, we updated all these files. Look at all this great stuff that came in. And so now what we need to do is we need to rename all the .airline files to be, oh, we need to get rid of these too. I don't know why those didn't get deleted the first time. I think I messed up the git stuff. Okay. Uh, and now, let's see here, those little changes, those are gone away. So now I need to rename this. Now what happens if I say refactor rename? If I say air dot, a dot airline, uh, just say, actually if I just say a dot airline dot txt. It says search for references, search for comments and strings. Sure, do that. Oh, I didn't find it in the... Oh, sorry, text parser test. Oh, a.airline isn't actually used anywhere. <laughs> right? I'm going to search the... the... Oh, that was what was created for the text number. Right. Oh, okay. Well, that's why. Okay. So then we don't need these at all, right? We can just delete those. So I'll just get rid of them here. Yeah, I that makes sense. Okay, so now bad flight. We'll we'll try this again and just shift F6 rename to badflight.airline.txt. Search for references. Search for strings. Refactor that. Uh, it says occurrences. Oh look! So IntelliJ is like, hey, I found that this uh, this badflight.airline was used here in this file. Do I re refactor it? Yes, I do. I click do refactor, and now it changes it. So I thought it would change it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right there. So it's changed it down here. It used to just be bad flight to airline, and now it added the TXT because I renamed it. This is one of those nice things about IntelliJ, right? It's smart. It can go do all this stuff, and that way I can just rename it in one place um, and, uh, and then have it work. So now I'm going to change that to TXT. I'm going to say, yes, please refactor all that. And there should be one more. Okay, a couple more. Uh, rename that to .txt. Yes, please refactor it. And then one flight. .txt and refactor. I think that's all of them. And I can go and uh, let's see here. Oh, now I'm, yeah. Okay, I'm going to log out of here. No, I don't want to log out of here. I do not want to, oops, I just killed it. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm going to go off to another terminal that hopefully you're able to see. <coughs> and I'm going to go back to students Alex. No, students Winter Alex. Portland State Job. Oops. Uh, airline. All right, I've got some changes here. All sorts of things. I'm going to now look for, just to see if there's any. Uh, Dot airline files here on the file system. They are in test classes. Well, that's fine. I'm going to do a clean verify. Everything looks good. I'm going to look for those airline files again. Oh, I have B and C. I wonder if those are created. So I thought I got rid of those. Let's just go look. A dot airline, oops, airline. Nope, okay, I don't know where those are coming from. Get remove, B dot airline, C dot airline. 
interesting. RMB.airline, C.airline. So they're gone now. If we go and run it, did they show up again? Ah, they did. Well, I'm not going to go through that now. So somewhere, yep, right. I don't know where they're getting created. Oh, to use the okay, yeah. okay. I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader, as yeah, to go fix it up. Because right, I mean, this is this is why like writing these temporary files, you don't need them. And then like Git says, oh, I noticed that you created a file here. Do you want to add to Git? And the answer is no. And so yeah, right. So okay, this is all cool. Um, is it okay if I just commit right to master? Yes. It'll be faster. Okay. Good. So I'm on master, and uh, yeah. Okay. So I've got the changes here. Uh, got a bunch of stuff that. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's refresh all that, make sure there's nothing funny going on here. Okay, and so then let's see here. Uh, renamed uh, dot airline files to dot txt so that we can submit them. Commit and push. Push that off to GitHub. Meanwhile, back on the PSU machine. I'm here on the PSU machine, right? Oops. Yes. I'm going to do a git pull to get those latest changes. Ugh. Sorry, I'm going to do this once because it's driving me crazy. So I can type in my passphrase because I don't type it very well. Good. Now I don't have to do that anymore. I go and, okay, move a bunch of uh, stuff around. I'm going to run my clean again and verify. This will take a minute. Okay, so that was all right. Now I'm going to try to submit again. Okay, complained about some things, but maybe that's all right. Oh, I'm going to complain about a couple of things. This is good. Uh, one was project one dot backup, which is not going to be submitted, and the other one is a package dot html. So it looks like uh, all this other stuff is going to get submitted, which does include the airline.txt. It includes all the tests and all the Java. So I think that's okay. Uh, so if any of you, I'm not actually going to go ahead and do it because it, this is not really his submission. Um, but uh, let me know if any of you have problems uh, submitting. But just remember, it only accepts Java code in uh, in the Java directory, in the source main Java, the source test Java, and only .txt and .xml in the resources directory. So that might be why you're having problems submitting. Yeah? So I think I had an issue where it doesn't, it can't just be in the resources directory, it doesn't actually submit there. It needs to actually be in the full as well, like that. Yes. So oh, yeah, 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 you're right. You, it just doesn't want it anymore. So yep. That's a good point. And uh, is it just because you wanted to use the not the Git resources stream of the class, like the Git resource, or, or did you want to begin with no, slash? I mean, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're right. That's not going to get submitted. Yep. Anyway, uh, like I said, this is the first term that um, uh, that I'm allowing students, enabling students to uh, submit things like resource files. And so, yep, we're still getting a, a couple kicks out of the system. And so if you're like, oh man, I submitted and I don't want to resubmit, resubmit. Um, so uh, as a bonus, to so those of you who are here in class and anyone who's listening to the recording in a timely fashion, if you, uh, if, if you get the code in by noon on Friday, I'm not going to count it as late. Because, um, I mean, there, there's a bunch of things that like, hey, the last minute rush of questions and everything like that. Um, so if uh, now if you've seen tonight, it's like, okay, wow, you know, I learned a whole bunch of things tonight, which is good. It's why you're paying, you know, what you're paying good money for. Um, uh, if you want to take some time tomorrow and sort of do a similar refactoring or, or move things around, um, that uh, that's totally cool. And so then I'd much rather have like a complete and working and, you know, passing all the tests and uh, getting all the code coverage thing on, you know, Friday night when I send it off to the graders 
uh, as opposed to like something that's broken and then I have to say, hey, your stuff's broken. Either here, here's a low grade or like go ahead and fix it and resubmit it anyway. Yeah. Um, did you lose points? Because the, because the, yeah, yes. Oh, sorry. I said, I thought, yeah, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, that was, and I thought I said that already on Slack, which I very well may have, and it was a lot of stuff. Anyway, but yes, yeah, so project one, if like you lost points in the readme because uh, the, the file didn't submit or, or, or whatever, you can resubmit that one. We're still regrading that. That's not a big deal. Okay. Well, I wasn't planning on covering all that tonight, but I'm really glad I did. I hope that was useful to you. You learned a lot about the, or you had, you know, I hope that you learned a lot about the Java IO APIs and, and resources. Any questions on the stuff that we'll be covering for the last hour? No? Okay. Let's take a 10-minute break. Uh, we'll come back and let's do a little bit of pair programming. <laughs>